Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the idea of, of the height of the smokestack and then the effective stack height above that. So let's think about the things that affect that uh, effective stack height. So remember that this was determined by the amount of uh, momentum of what's coming out of the smokestack and then also the, the temperature because we have needed to dissipate. There's going to be buoyancy if this is a warmer than the surrounding air that needs to be dissipated until you reach some sort of steady state with the atmosphere as it cools off and loses momentum. So imagine if you were leaving at a constant rate as the wind is blowing at 10 miles per hour. So imagine then the wind speed increases to 20 miles per hour. Will that increase the effective stack height or will it decrease? So take a second to, to think about that, maybe pause. So what we'll see is that um, as the wind speed increases, this effective stack height goes down because now we're mixing uh, that same amount of warm air and momentum out more quickly. So the things that affect the dilution of that heat and momentum, uh, if you increase that dilution, you reduce the effective stack height. If you reduce that dilution, you increase the effective stack height. We also will see, so, so there's a, a number of different equations that approximate effective stack height. The one we're gonna talk about in class is called Holland's equation. And we can see that that wind speed U shows up and it shows up uh, in the denominator, which kind of reflects what we just said that, you know, as, as this increases, the effective stack height decreases. Some of the other things that go in kind of are as to be expected so we talked about momentum. And so the, this VS reflects that velocity of the gas as it's leaving the smokestack, um, which affects its momentum, VS. Uh, it turns out also the diameter of the smokestack affects that. So the diameter shows up here in the front. It also shows up parenthetically in this other term, which means that there's also, there's both a, a linear and a quadratic effect of that stack diameter. I'm going to jump down to the bottom because we also talked about the dispersion of thermal energy. It's not just uh, momentum, but also that kind of buoyancy. So the, the buoyancy is a, really a reflection of both the temperature of the gas leaving and the air temperature surrounding it. Uh, and so you really are calculating the difference between those two temperatures and normalizing it by the stack temperature. So that uh, if, if you're warmer than surrounding air, this term will be positive, which will cause uh, this effective stack height to be higher. If what's coming out is actually colder than this surrounding air, then instead of having buoyancy, you'll actually have, um, you, know, you could in theory have things drop uh, below um, the, the height of the emissions uh, as, it, as the thing that's being emitted needs to warm up to the temperature of the surrounding air. I would say that's not gonna happen very often in practice, but this equation, equation would describe that. Um, and then finally, we have that those things, that buoyancy part depends not just on the temperature, but it also depends on the atmospheric pressure. And so if you do this at sea level, um, where you have, uh, you know, the, uh, you'll have some amount of, dispersion, if we move this up, say from sea level to, you know, Denver, you're going to reduce the atmospheric pressure. Um, so this term will go down. And so it's going to, um, what is that going to do? Change, it's going to change the, uh, the effective stack height. It's going to actually decrease it. Cool. So we see the terms that affected. And, and these other things, these constants in here are just empirical constants uh, from this being calibrated. Okay, so to get to the overall stack height, we take this delta H and add it to the, the height of the actual emissions. It has units, uh, millibars per, uh, per millibar per meter. And uh, the temperatures here are in terms of Kelvin which makes sense because we wouldn't want to divide by something that could be zero. 
so hopefully that gave you, a, again, a, a good feeling for kind of the things that affect that effective stack height in the direction that they affected it. And buoyancy increases stack height, uh, diameter, bigger smokestacks have higher stack heights, higher pressure has a higher stack height, higher velocity coming out has a higher stack height, and then um, higher wind speed reduces the stack height. Um, cool, we'll wrap up there. And then the last video in this series is gonna be essentially thinking about how we would actually apply this to a real world problem.